I'm Michelle from the Wilcox Science Center, and today I'd like to share with you how we use the OptiViews RTU SDOCT here in our practice. We have created instructional videos that not only share the technical side of capturing great images, but also the tricks of the trade we've acquired over years of patient testing. We have created three videos, which include our glaucoma protocol, our retina protocol, and scleral lens imaging. I hope you enjoy. This scleral lens instructional video teaches the technical steps and the art of capturing SD-OCT scans of pre-corneal lenses. Okay, so now we're going to start. Um, we're going to analyze the lens that we've placed on the patient's eye. Uh, first and foremost is we make sure that the CAM lens is attached. Um, these lenses come on and off. There's two lenses, the CAM L and the CAM S. CAM L is a long lens, CAM S is a short lens. The green, which is the CAM L, is uh, lower magnification, and the CAM S is higher magnification. With our contact lenses here, we uh, do our scans on the, um, the green lens, which is the CAM L. So I'm going to make sure that's attached first. I'm going to bring in my corneal illuminator lights, and we're going to put it close to the patient's eye to light it up here. I'm going to get the screen ready to do my cross line and my line scans so that we can evaluate the contact lens. All right, while we're doing um, scans on the lens, it's important part to keep the eyelid out of the way. When you do a cross line scan, primarily the patient is can usually open their eyelid wide enough. If you say open real wide for me, the top lid is out of the way. Some patients have the little tiny eyes and you're going to have to grab the top lid even for a cross line to get it out of the way. They have tiny lids. He did a fine job at keeping his eyes nice and open. Um, the biggest problem is when you are having the patient look down so we can evaluate the top of the lens. So go ahead and look down for me. And we're doing um, the vertical scan of the top of the lens. It's important here to grab the eyelid and lift it up so that we can, the, so the whole lens is visible on the scan and we're not getting his eyelid. So go ahead and look down for me. Good, right there. And so his eyelid's out of the way, and I can see the sclera and the lens, and it would be, go ahead and capture the photograph. And then the same thing would apply when we're evaluating the bottom of the lens. I would have him look up for me. I'm going to grab with my hand here, and I kind of just hold onto this and grab the bottom, and I uh, maneuver the OCT with my right hand just because I'm right-handed. So I'm going to grab his lid and have him look up for me, as far up as he can. And I'm going to grab the bottom lid and I'm going to use my right hand to do the joystick to make fine adjustments and get the photograph, excuse me, the scan as I would like to appear on the screen. And then when I have the patient looking to the right so I can evaluate um, the nasal part of the lens, how it's fitting. I get him in position, and depending on, again, how wide the patient's keeping their eyes open, open real wide for me, he's doing a fine job again. If the patient had tiny eyes, I would, again, just grab the top lid, and um, the same would apply when I'm um, evaluating the lens temporally. So, again, important part of doing the contact lens scans or evaluating the gas perm would be for the patient's eyelids to be nice and open so we can really get the full effect of the lens and the sclera so we can see the side and how the lens is fitting. So stay tuned for the rest of our videos. Thank you. So we've created a corneal scleral lens, which is just what we've labeled it, um, a protocol. Dr. Wilcox likes us to do um, with each eye a cross line scan and then four line scans, which will do the top of the lens, the bottom of the lens, the right side of the lens, and the left side of the lens, just so we can analyze how the contact lens is sitting on the cornea. So first I'm going to click on the cross line. I'm going to start with the right eye, and I'm going to hit the four arrows down here to let the instrument know I'm ready to start my scan. I'm going to have the patient lined up. As I showed earlier, I've already got the lens attached and the corneal illuminator lights in place. So I'm going to start my scan here. Now, when you have the cam lens on, it's very important that you do not make any fast movements because you will poke them in the eye. Um, so I'm going to line up my crosshair in the center of his pupil. I'm going to go in very slowly 
until I get a clear image. The image is pretty clear, so I'm going to go really slow until I can see the scan come up here in the two boxes above. And it is, okay. So now I'm going to have him blank. And it's important, we want to be able to see the back surface of the lens and the cornea. We want to be able to um, tell them two apart so that we can see exactly where they're um, sitting on the cornea so that Dr. Wilcox can analyze the fit. Blink, okay, and then open real wide for me. We want to try to eliminate as much of eyelid here so that we don't, sh doesn't show up here in the picture. Blink, okay, and no blinking for just a second. Blink. Get it back in position. I'm going to try to eliminate those lines if possible. Call him the blink. What it's doing is we want to make sure it always processes the image. It doesn't always if the signal is low, but when it processes it again, it's going to turn um, the grainy like picture into a more high contrast so we can see we can see the back surface of the lens and the cornea which is what he wants to see. So I got caught him in a blink so I'm going to redo it. This would um, be a great image if I didn't catch him in a blink. 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 Alright, no blinking for just a second for me. If the signal is low, this auto P here is for the corneal lens and it's going to darken the contrast and help with better scan. If you have um, horrible tear film, you would maybe apply some tears and then auto P to help strengthen the signal and the contrast. Blink. Blink. As I move the lights around, you can see the shadow, the signal went up a little. This glare is not, you don't want that there because that's what's going to cut out the image. So you want, you want it to be bright, but you don't want it to be too bright because too bright will cut the image out. Blink. Blink. Now that I rearrange the lights, I'm going to auto pee. Mm. It's just telling me that the signal strength's a little low. But as long as it processes the image. So it's a pretty good image. You can see the back surface. Front, you see the cornea. I'll just save that. And now we're going to go on to the next scan, which we do the top and then we do the bottom. So I'm going to start with the top of the lens. Now this is going to require the patient. I'm going to have to click here on the screen and it's going to give you a horizontal line to start. And you're going to click and then use the mouse to scroll and it's going to shift, making a vertical line so that we can evaluate the top of the lens. So I always stand up here and tell the patient to look down for me. Now obviously all we see is eyelid, so I'm gonna use my finger here to get the top of it. He's looking down too much. Look up a little for me. Now we want him to look down a little bit, but the key is to getting just enough lens and just a tiny bit of the sclera here so the doctor can see where it's sitting. And then see the image is a little dark, so I'm just going to move these around. Close your eye for me. I'm going close in between scans while it's processing. Okay, so now we're going to evaluate the scan I just captured. Um, this is the lens here. This is an ICD 16.5 lens. Um, all the lenses are different in, um, in diameter and sag. 
Dr. Wilcox is going to check out here the side, um, the area between the back surface of the lens and the cornea, and we're going to check to see how the, the lens is going to fall in the sclera. If you see here, you can see um, his limbus, which is interesting. Um, and when we capture the image, we want to be sure enough to, to get most lens. We do want a little bit of the sclera so we can see where it's fitting. We don't want you know, a little bit of the, just the lens in here and then the rest of it being sclera. That's a poor image. So we want, again, most of it to be about 90% lens and about 10% sclera here. So he can evaluate. You can see the, um, the surface of the lens, the change of the um, edge lift, how it goes up a little bit there, which is just the ge geometry of the lens. Um, and as you see here, these images, um, all of them, he didn't blink. We got all quality images. They're all black. Previously in the in the cross line, um, some of the images the the scan quality wasn't as high, um, but the process data or the pic the image was clear. So it's not always about um, the 32 photos over here, but about the process processed image that you get, um, it, which is the final quality. As long as you can see the details of the cornea and the fitting of the lens, which is what's most important. So now we're going to save this and. Um, next line scan that we're going to do is we're going to evaluate the bottom of the lens on his cornea. So again, I'm clicking, I'm turning it from a horizontal line to a vertical. So I'm going to have him look up for me. Look up for me. And again, I'm using the joystick to make fine adjustments to go down a little. I'm going to get his eye in the picture and I'm going to go in nice and slow so I don't poke him in the eye. Okay, look up a little bit more for me. Good. Up, up, up a little bit more. Now this lens is a 16.5 diameter so it's a bigger lens. So we have to really have them look up there. And it's a balancing act because again we want to make sure we get some of the sclera while getting most of the blends. We want to try to be able to see the sag here so the doctor can evaluate that as well as the sclera down here so the image is being processed. And that's a, that's a fair image. I'm going to um, redo it a little bit because I would like to include this up here so he can see where um, it's fitting along the cornea at the top there. So. I'm going to hit the four lines and not save it. Look up for me again. Blink. Blink. Look up. Good, right there. Up a little more. But the further they look up, the easier it's going to be for you to do your, take your photo. And I'm gonna look up. All right, right there. Don't move for me. Nice and still. I'll just instruct the patient what you want them to do. Because look up. Good. Right there. Don't move. Up a little bit more. And as you see, there's some, sometimes there's some tears and sweat that go into getting these photos up a little bit more because you got to keep instructing the patients, you know, they're, you're tugging on their lids. Go ahead and close your eyes for me. Processing the image. You're that, right. That's better. You can see this up here. I'm gonna redo. Try one more. It's a little. It's a little blurry up here. So I would uh, probably redo the scan. But you get the final. The final gist of what we're doing here. Again, we want to be able to see how the sag and what, how it's fitting on the cornea up here. How it comes down to the limbus, and we want to be able to see it fit on the sclera as well. And then we would save it, and we would go to the next scan, which is going to be. Um, we're gonna. We have the patient um, look to your right for me. 
and I'm going to look nasally at the, at the fitting of the lens. Look back a little bit, not quite so much to the right. Good. Now we see a little bit of edge lift there. Blink. Good, right there, don't move for me. And again, it's gonna process the image and take the grainy look and make it higher contrast, pretty image. We wait for it to process. And it's a good image. We can see where it's sitting. We can see its limbus. We can um, see um, the sclera here. The lens is visible, so it's a good image. This is a good image down here. It's not too dark. You can see what I'm shooting. So I'm going to save that, and we're going to go to the last image for this eye, which is going to be, um, we're going to do a temporal scan. So I'm having to look to his left. Not So look up a tiny bit. Good, right there. Perfect. I'm gonna go in, go nice and slow. A little bit more to your left. Good, right there. Tiny bit more. Good, right there. And a lot of the patients I do this on have learned what a smidgen is. Um, we want them to look, do tiny movements. Once we've done the scans on them a few times, we get them trained a little bit better. It's gonna process the image, and we are gonna evaluate to make sure it has all of um, the different parts that Dr. Wilcox is going to need to look at to evaluate the lens. We see the side, we can see the edge here of the lens, we can see a little bit of the sclera, so it's a good image, and save it. And of course we would do the same thing for the left eye as we just did for the right eye. So, and important part of doing the corneal scans is getting the eyelid. So if you want to walk around here, I'll be happy to show you how we um, maneuver around using the OCT while holding the patient's lid. All right, while we're doing um, scans on the lens, it's important part to keep the eyelid out of the way. When you do a cross-line scan, primarily the patient is can usually open their eyelid wide enough. If you say open real wide for me, the top lid is out of the way. Some patients have the little tiny eyes and you're gonna have to grab the top lid, even for a cross line to get it out of the way. They have tiny lids. He did a fine job at keeping his eyes nice and open. Um, the biggest problem is when you are having the patient look down so we can evaluate the top of the lens. So go ahead and look down for me. And we're doing um, the vertical scan of the top of the lens. It's important here to grab the eyelid and lift it up so that we can, the, so the whole lens is visible on the scan and we're not getting his eyelid. So go ahead and look down for me. Good, right there. And so his eyelid's out of the way and I can see the sclera and the lens and it'd be, go ahead and capture the photograph. And then the same thing would apply when we're evaluating the bottom of the lens. I would have him look up for me. I'm going to grab with my hand here and I kind of just hold onto this and grab the bottom and I um, maneuver the OCT with my right hand just because I'm right handed. So I'm going to grab his lid and have him look up for me as far up as he can and I'm going to grab the bottom lid and I'm going to use my right hand to do the joystick to make fine adjustments and get the photograph, excuse me, the scan as I would like to appear on the screen. And then when I have the patient looking to the right, so I can evaluate um, the nasal part of the lens, how it's fitting, I get him in position. And depending on, again, how wide the patient's keeping their eyes open, open real wide for me, he's doing a fine job again. If the patient had tiny eyes, I would again just grab the top lid and um, the same would apply when I'm um, evaluating the lens temporally. So again, the important part of doing the contact lens scans or evaluating the gas perm would be for the patient's eyelids to be nice and open so we can really get the full effect of the lens and the sclera so we can see the side and how the lens is fitting. So stay tuned for the rest of our videos. Thank you.